Good morning, First Lutheran Cincinnati. Uh, pastoral intern Tyler here with you today. Um, I want to talk a little bit today about... Good morning, First Lutheran Cincinnati. Uh, pastoral intern Tyler here today. Sorry for that. I think we had a, just a moment of technical difficulty. <laughs> um, today I want to share with you some thoughts about peace and joy. And so we're, we're about halfway through the Advent season at the moment. And um, for those of you who are not familiar with the idea of Advent, it's the four weeks that we have leading up to Christmas where we kind of go through and uh, we have this sort of theme of hope. Uh, the theme of looking forward to something that God is doing um, both in our world today and remembering what God is going to do uh, at the end of all things. And so as we kind of have that theme in our mind um, and we think about the different Sundays or the different weeks in the middle of Advent, we have hope, we have peace, we have love, and we have joy. Last night we had uh, a, an evening prayer, hold an evening prayer. So if you got to join us, uh, I hope you, you found that, um, that prayer to be a blessing. And we shared some thoughts about peace. Uh, Elizabeth Gilbert, one of, our, um, one of the, uh, the congregants, um, she shared some reflections on where she finds peace. And she, she drew from uh, one of the, I guess, one of my favorite verses, one of my favorite passages in, uh, in the book of John. Jesus is with his disciples uh, before he's about to be crucified. It's, it's kind of the end. Um, it's during the Last Supper. And he's giving his disciples words of comfort, words of peace, um, to not be afraid because he's going to send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's going to be with them. Um, one of the words we use for the Holy Spirit is uh, the word comforter. And so comforter, uh, in this case, kind of gives you an image of peace as somebody that's that's there to... To, to be with you, to dwell with you in the middle of trouble and in the middle of changing times, in the middle of experiences that maybe don't feel the best. And so that's something I think to, to think about in terms of peace um, and where we experience that today. Um, I think it's really difficult because the world right now is just so crazy. Um, I mean, even more, it, we can't always use that, that I think, excuse that the world is just always crazy, but right now it seems especially crazy. And so the idea of having somebody there for comfort, having somebody there for peace, having somebody that kind of knows what we're dealing with on, on multiple levels is really important. And so as I think about that, um, and I move kind of towards um, what we're going to be discussing next week is joy. In, in our Advent, um, in our Advent sort of um, Advent journey, joy is next week. One of the things that stood out to me uh, as I was kind of reading my Bible was uh, the book of Philippians. So Paul uh, is in prison as he's writing the book of Philippians. Um, Paul and Silas are in prison, and they had uh, visited uh, the church in, the, in uh, Philippi. And one of the things that is really kind of special about the book of Philippians is the discussion about joy and rejoicing in the midst of trouble, which is kind of funny to think about. Paul is in prison. What does Paul have to be happy about? What does Paul have to rejoice about? Uh, and I think it's this joy that uh, we experience in the sharing of the gospel in Jesus Christ. Um, somebody that understands what it's like to be in prison, somebody that understands what it's like to be uh what it's like to, to, to suffer at the hand of, of somebody that's oppressing you. Um, Philippians is really special when it comes to incarnational theology, and we use the term incarnational. We're talking about Jesus being both a human being and God. And this is especially important for us with the, in, in the Christian tradition, is understanding that Jesus wasn't just a good teacher. Jesus doesn't just wasn't a human being. Jesus was also God, and not just God, not just somebody that's you know way up in, in heaven that has very little to do with human beings, but Jesus is involved in our experience. Jesus is in the middle of it all. Um, and I think that's particularly, particularly special. Um, that's one of the ways I think that we can kind of get a, a sense of joy in knowing who Jesus is is because Jesus is, is a human being and Jesus is also God. It's something that we try to wrap our minds around and, you know, as theologians 
we are not always the best equipped at explaining it in terms that people can understand. This has been an argument for hundreds and hundreds of years, but um, I just think that's always a really interesting, a really comforting fact. And we find Jesus in the middle of suffering. We find Jesus in the strangest places. Um, and I think that we can find peace in that. Um, I think a little bit about, you know, just to kind of bring it up again, the bell tower, um, sort of finding peace and joy in the sense of God's doing something in the middle of all of this. The fact that uh, we're starting to have discussions about what it might look like for the bell tower to be re restored instead of um, instead of demolished, what it might look like to have those um, those conversations with people outside of our walls, and sort of this idea of peace, this this embodying peace and um, and collaboration with people that maybe don't you know necessarily worship with us, but are still in the same community with us. Um, I think that's kind of a, a, a joyful thing to think about, the, the prospect that God is doing something amazing right now. And that's what Ad, that Advent's about. Advent is waiting for God to do something, God to do something amazing. And God's always doing something. Let's We, we have to be clear about that. So, uh, But that gives us, I think, reason to rejoice and reason to be thankful. Um, as I say that, I am going to share a, a brief scripture from the book of Philippians, uh, just to kind of prepare us for what we have coming in the next weeks. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I think that's a really important passage to remember. That's a, a Philippians chapter 4. And especially, I guess, in the middle of all this is that the, the things that are around us don't make us the church, um, but it's in fact our shared faith. It's our shared experience with Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus Christ is a human being and as God, a suffering God with us. We find joy in that. As strange as that sounds, we find joy in that because we understand that God understands what it's like to be human. And we also understand that God has amazing things promised, amazing things for us in the future. We just need to be vigilant. We need to watch. Um, that's what Advent's about, is just to be mindful of what's coming in the future. So I want you to be thinking about that. Um, if you have anything to share in the comments, um, either a prayer request, or maybe um, if you'd like to share share where you find peace or where you find joy, or maybe something that you're hoping for this Advent season, share it in the comments. We'd love to see it. Um, just sort of a, a, a thing to be mindful of as we, as we go through this Advent season. All that said, uh, if you'll take a moment and join me in prayer today, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of joy and God of peace, we thank you for all of the all of the blessings that you give us. We thank you especially for your son, Jesus Christ, who is truly human and truly God. We thank you for his reconciling work. We thank you for showing up in our lives, and we ask that you be with us as we show up in other people's lives, participating in the mission that you have called us to serve in. Help us to inspire others to uphold peace, and help us to rejoice even in the troubled times, knowing that you have amazing things. You have promised amazing things for us. And you're going to follow through with that. All this we ask in your most holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us uh, today. 
Um, just a couple of quick things. A uh, reminder that we do have worship on Sunday, so we'd love to see you there. And uh, tonight, if uh, if you ha didn't have a chance to join us for Hold an Evening Prayer, we do have a recording of that available. And if you want a little extra practice, um, uh, First Lutheran Church Springfield is going to be uh, hosting a, a, a Hold an Evening Prayer that will be available at 7 p.m. Eastern tonight. So that, that will give you a little extra practice, a little more familiarity. We'd love to see you next week as well, uh, as we'll be talking about joy and we'll have uh, some some other thoughts and reflections on that as well. So um, I hope you have a great rest of your week, and God bless.